horror, violence, madness, despair. For the most part, these are unpleasant experiences that most people try to avoid. Yet, there is much part of the human equation as love, joy, and happiness. So, it's only natural that some people enjoy dipping their tongue into the hot soup of these more extreme facets of the human condition. And they can do so in a safe environment by watching horror films or by reading a scary book. According to some study that may very well exist, uh, people find a fictionalized terror comforting because it helps them come to terms with the very real horrors that besiege a sensitive mind in a mad, 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 mad world. But not just that. It helps them come to terms with this very simple, terrifying truth. Today, you are alive. Tomorrow, maybe not. Some people though, like my sweet wife, Helga, they hate horror films and they will not read a scary book. Why should I purposely watch something that scares me? It's a horrible feeling to be scared. Making yourself afraid of an illusion when you are safe in your living room? That's offensive to me. There are people in the world who have experienced real terror. Pure, unfiltered terror. You think being chased by burned man with knife fingers is scary? That is not scary. Seeing your family die at the hands of fascists is scary. You are like Marie Antoinette playing poor in her little pretend village. People that in one way or another share this opinion with my sweet wife, Ilga, will not enjoy today's game. High Society. The classic auction game by the good Dr. Rainia Knizia. Like a certain cute little piglet, it was released in 1995. But while that poor pig is probably dead now, High Society is more alive than ever, having just been re-released with beautiful Alphonse Mucha's inspired illustrations by the talented Medusa doll maker. Just look at these beautiful tarot deck sized cards. The line work is clean and delicate, the palette is subtle but luscious, and the cast is laudably diverse in all but smugness. It's an ensemble of beautiful, attractive, nouveau rich people who in real life today would only ever speak to me in tones of extreme condescension and contempt. This is one beautiful dick. In playing high society, it's so easy that I reckon I could even teach it to my mother. And she hates board games, everything they represent, and everyone who plays them. Hand players the money of their preferred color. Shuffle the lock shot cards and reveal one. The number on the card indicates the status level it confers. Now, players take turns to bid and they are not allowed to exchange cards on their hands for previously played cards. Bidding continues until all but one fold. Stuck-up cowards get to keep their money, but the intrepid bon vivant will get the status. Of course, not all cards award you status. The disgraced cards represent terrible mistakes no decent person should ever be caught in public committee, such as wearing unfashionable clothing, or not having enough money to pay your William at a fancy bistro. Rather than awarding you points, these cards will make you lose 5 points or will make you discard one status card or even half your total score at the end of the match. So naturally, bidding here works a little bit different. It's a lot more cruel, a lot more sauvage. Players here will bid not to get the card. Boring, no fun squares that are the first to fall will eat shit. Once the fourth green card is revealed, the game is over, and the player with the highest status is better than all other non-entities. Ah, but there's a little twist. At the end of the game, the player with the least money 
loses. He gets cast out, shunned by the other upstanding members of polite society for being a miserable pauper. Everyone will look, will point and laugh. Ha! Look at that poor person. Oh, vulgar. How disgusting. So it's important to give off the appearance of a devil may care big spin the flapper. But at the same time, you must be shrewd. You must be calculating. You must be a massive funny. Imagine a fictional character. Let's call him Jaime. James. James is like a big, heavy, dark cloud. He is making it rain. He is squandering all his money on stuff he doesn't even want, on stuff he doesn't even need. But his friends want that stuff. So now he wants that stuff too, because he has yet to suffer his way into having a personality. And while he's doing that, spending all his money, he's pretending to be having a grand old time. And his friends, they look at his tableau and they tremble with a mix of envy, of fear, admiration. For James, is a man of wealth and taste. And he still has so many cards in his hand. People at the cafe are gossiping, oh my goodness. James is so rich, it's so immoral, I think I love him. But is he rich though? No, his mother is. So while James is out there wearing a top hat and fancy white gloves, mingling with the beautiful people and guffawing loudly as he drinks champagne inside, he is terrified. He's absolutely terrified because you know what? His mother cut him off. So now he is broke. And he knows that if the upcoming card is a disgrace card, <gasps> then he's doomed and no one will ever love him ever again. But you know, in this completely fictional uh, illustrative example, I know for a fact that no one actually ever loved Jean James. Hmm? No one ever loved him. All his friends was, were just indulging his mad spending like double-crossed psychopathic hyenas, just waiting for him to take a step too far and boom, explode into, into a cloud of poverty and uh, humiliation so they could gnaw on his bones. You see, for they know, they know that all the cards in his hand are actually worth near nothing. They know that when this disgrace card comes out, Jaime and James will have to be the first one to fold. They know James will have to eat shit. And watching James James' face eating shit is so, so, so much fun. Some people hate horror films. My wife, Elga, she hates high society. It makes her feel tense and nervous and she can't relax. She can't sleep, her bed's on fire. God help her. She's a real live wire. This game makes her feel angry and frustrated. It makes her feel like a big donkey. And why would anyone want to feel like that? I tell you why. Because seeing Jaime's face eating shit is so, so much fun. Every time high society hits the table, there's a collective groan. The mood changes. Everyone laughs nervously as they put their money cards in order in their hands getting ready for 10 minutes of uncertainty of lies of stress of manipulation of speculation of the jolly frustration of knowing that because the cards come in such random order all your strategy all your frugality can be like a childproof stick pointless I've been Jaime Duarte Duarte. Thank you for watching. I hope I have placed a worker in your hearts and in your minds. Thank you.